ask if you have your Bibles with you just to turn back to the passage that was read in Luke's Gospel, chapter 18. And from there, we will be sharing a few thoughts with you. Shall we pray? Father, we give you thanks again for this another day you have made. Thank you for sparing our lives and, Lord, making it possible for us to be in church today. We thank you for the blessings you have imparted to us thus far. And even now, Lord, as your word is shared, we pray that it will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish the purposes for which it has been sent. We pray, Lord, that you will bless all of our hearts, that today you will meet us at the point of our need. And Father, we pray especially for those who are outside of the kingdom of God, that today for them will be the day when they say yes to Jesus. We pray that they will be rejoicing in the presence of the angels over those who will come to know you as their own personal Lord and Savior. So be with us, we pray. Hide your servant behind the cross. Glorify your name in Jesus' name. Amen. I have given a title to the message this morning. And the title is The Turning Point. Those critical moments in life. Let us repeat it again. The turning point, those critical moments in life. In Psalm 119 and verse 57, the psalmist says he came to a place in his life when he reflected on what was going on and all that he was involved in. He said, I thought upon my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. So, so what the psalmist is saying, having looked back at his life, where he's coming from and where he was at that point in his life, he realized that God has been good to him. He, he realized that God has been there. And in another portion of God's word, he said, surely goodness, this is Psalm 23, and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And here's how I like to say this verse. If the truth be told, for you and I, we will say, surely goodness and mercy have followed me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. So there came a time in his life when he reflected on how he was living and recognizing the goodness of God in his life he made a decision. He said, I am going to turn my feet onto thy testimonies. In other words, he's going to do what God wants him to do. He wants to live a life that pleases God for the blessings that God has blessed him with over the years. As we think about the critical moments in life, I don't know about you, but today, one of the things that is happening is every day you wake up and you listen to the news, whatever social media um, handles you're on and, and you're getting your information from, every day is bad news. Somebody is shot or somebody is murdered. Every day it happens. And we hear people crying out to God and say, Lord, we can't take it anymore. What has become of Jamaica, this land? We love this island that you have given to us. These are some serious times in which we are living. Critical times even. And when it's not the crime and violence, it is the carnage that is on the road. Because of the indiscipline of our motorists. There's, there's this accident of the accident and, 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 and if it's not one, it's two. And can you imagine five young men died recently in an accident from one family. That must be hot. One family. 
These are some serious times in which we are living, brothers and sisters and friends, critical moments. And as we ponder the times in which we are living, we look at the passage that is before us. And here was a young man who, perhaps in recognition of what was going on in his time, he came to Jesus with a very important question, a question that I believe should concern all of us. The question he asked the Lord Jesus Christ is this, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Perhaps he was reflecting on his life and he must have thought to himself that what happens hereafter? What is going to happen after I die? Am I going to have life after death? So he asked the question of the Lord Jesus Christ, what must I do to inherit eternal life? But you know, he called him good master before, and so on. In his response to this young man, Jesus said, Why callest thou me good? There is only one good, and that is God. If it is you are prepared to call me good, you must be accepting the fact that I, Jesus, am God. My brothers and my sisters and my friends, I'd like to share with you that to inherit eternal life is not a matter of doing, but more a matter of believing. Because the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, For by grace are we saved. Not of work, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So the salvation that Jesus comes to offer is a gift from God. It therefore means that you can't work for it. It is not something you're going to do to get it. But it is a matter of believing to receive it. Not of works lest any man should boast. Because can you imagine if you were able to work for this gift, for the salvation... By the way, you go work for a gift. So it is a, if it is a gift, it is free. If it is wages, you work for it, right? So it is not, it is not a wage, but it is a, it is a gift. It is freely given. So it is not what you do, but what you believe. In Acts chapter 16, the Bible gives us an account of the Philippian jailer. After... The prison doors were open and he thought all the prisoners were gone and recognized that Paul and all the prisoners were still there when they had the opportunity to escape. He must have said to himself, no sir, this is not normal. Something must be different about these people and indeed something was different about them because they had been with Jesus. Then he said to himself, he said to them, men and brethren, what must I do to be saved? And the apostle Paul responded and said unto him, believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be, thou shalt be saved. To inherit eternal life is not a matter of doing, but is something, is a matter of believing. Can you believe that? Is the question in John's Gospel, chapter 3 and verse 16. This is a verse that all of us on the school teach children know. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have. Ever, listen, this is what the young ruler was asking Jesus about. Should not perish, but have everlasting life. Listen to verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be, might be saved. If ever you're, you are going to be saved, you're going to have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. 
So Jesus responded to this young man who asked this very pertinent question by saying, you know the commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. You shouldn't steal, you shouldn't bear false witness. Um, honor your father and your mother and so on. And to this the young man replied, all of these things I have done from my youth up. But you know, I believe Jesus was calling him out, you know. Jesus said those things because he knew that this was a young man whom, like some young men in our society today, are doing the best that they can. They're not involved in in a life of crime and violence and those things. They are sticking to the rules. They are doing what is right. They even go to church. And Jesus said to him, but you know the commandments to which he said, I have kept them from my youth. Listen to Jesus' response to him. But you still lack one thing. Here is what Jesus is saying. That by keeping the rules and even going to church, cannot guarantee you eternal life. No, no, no. It can't. There, he said there is still one thing that is lacking. He said it to this young man. And listen to what he said. Sell everything that you have and distribute it to the poor. Distribute the proceeds to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven. And then Come and follow me. Is there any difficulty in that response, my brothers and sisters and friends? Is, isn't it a clear response? Do you understand what Jesus was saying to him? Jesus was saying to him, sell everything that you have. Distribute it to the poor and come and follow me. The Bible says that when the young man heard what Jesus said. Obviously that was not he, what he was expecting of Jesus he couldn't he couldn't swallow that he couldn't wrap his mind around that sell everything that me have that I've worked so hard for over these years and to come and follow you the young man the Bible said went away sorrowful Brothers and sisters and friends, here's what happened. This was a pivotal moment in his life. This was a moment in his life that would change his eternal destiny. This moment from which he walked away sorrowful. You know how many times you and I do the very same thing? In our lives from time to time, some pivotal moments appear which will never happen again. And sometimes we do not seize the moment, but we walk away from it. And it determines, it, it, it can determine our eternal destiny. It was obvious that this young man was, was trusting in his riches instead of trusting in God. But, but you might say to me, but, but sir, that, 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 that don't apply to me because... It looks like money, I keep malice with me. I am not rich. But let me ask you this question. In this pivotal moment this morning, what is the one thing that you lack? What is the one thing that is preventing you from inheriting eternal life? Perhaps for you this morning, it is not riches. But Jesus is saying, for you to come and inherit eternal life, for you to come and believe in me, for you to come and follow me, you must give up the bling life. Yes. You know, we watch our television and we see all of these lights and the glamour and the glitter. And you can be easily sucked into that as the way we should live our lives. And Jesus is saying, give up that. Give up that bling life. Give up the party and come and follow me. But, but that, that might not be your issue. 
But I also hear Jesus saying, give up the life of crime and violence, all the scamming that is going on today, and the extortion. And as a result of that, we have killings after killings after killings. Because money not share right. And people rob up money. And there is reprisal killings that is going, going on. Jesus is saying, give up the life of crime and violence. And come and follow me. But perhaps you say, but that, that isn't relevant to me. You know, that's, that's not my thing. My thing is pleasure. And Jesus is saying, you need to give that up to come to him. Because listen, listen to me, my brothers and sisters and friends, especially my friends who are outside of the kingdom. You do not understand what pleasure is until you come to Jesus. Because in the word of God, it says about this thing called pleasure. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. And you see at his right hand, pleasures for time and all of eternity forevermore so if it's pleasure you are looking for and you are running down come to jesus come to jesus he will make your life fulfilled meaningful and as as we sing if you want joy real joy wonderful joy let jesus Come into your heart. So I don't know what is your Achilles heel. What it is that is holding you back. What it is that the enemy of your soul have you bound to. But Jesus is saying this morning, give it up. Give it up. Give it up. Come and follow me. Listen to what the Bible says. What shall it profit a man for all the things that we are running down? What shall it profit a man if he were to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Jesus is saying that that's a bad exchange. And this is the exchange a young man made. Because of his riches, he wasn't prepared to part with it. But the question is, what, what profit is it to that young man? With all of his riches. And then at the end of his life. Loses his own soul. Jesus is asking the same question. But, but, but I know the relevance here is a little different. Because here's what is happening. Some people today not gaining the whole world you know. But them losing their own soul just the same. It don't make sense. It's not that them rolling over in money every day. And them wake up and drink champagne at 9 o'clock in the morning. And have people to them back and call them poor and life hard with them. But yet still, they have not come to Jesus. They are making bad exchange. Listen to what Moses said. He would prefer rather to suffer afflictions with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin, which is only for a season. And nobody not saying it is not pleasurable, but... It is only for a season if you choose the pleasures of sin over a life with God, you are making a bad exchange. So you need to think about your life, my friends. And as the psalmist says, I thought upon my ways and turn my feet unto thy testimony will you turn today my friends will you turn so we find that this young man who at this pivotal moment made a bad decision and chose rather to turn away from Jesus it's not Jesus' response to this young man, the, the, the young man's action. Jesus said, 
hardly shall those who are rich enter into the kingdom of God. In other words, how hardly it is for those who are trusting in their riches. Let's go. In their good works, in their good deeds, in their good looks. And you can, can keep going on and on and on because it is difficult or impossible for those who are trusting in anything else apart from Jesus Christ to get into the kingdom of heaven. It doesn't matter how good you think you are. Jesus is saying, unless you are trusting in him and him alone for salvation, it's not going to work, cannot work. So Jesus said, it is far easier. This is where our sister song comes in now. It is far easier for a camel to go through the eye of a, and I'm looking for one, a needle. <laughs> I'm looking for one. Now don't tell me about the needle's eye gate and so on, you know, because it was possible for the camel to go through the needle's eye gate. It was hard, but it was possible. Listen to what Jesus says. It is impossible for a rich man to go through the, to, it is far easier rather for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Listen to the response of his disciples. Then who can be saved? Who then can be saved? So Jesus uses an impossible situation to say to them that it is far possible for that impossible situation to happen than for somebody to go to heaven trusting in anything else apart from Jesus. That is it. That is it. And then he said, with God, what is impossible with men is possible with God. Because you and I know that with God, all things are possible for those who can believe. Do you believe that? So the challenge this morning as we close is this. There are some critical moments in life and this morning is one of them because the opportunity is yours to make a decision are you going to follow Jesus or are you going to turn away from him when the apostle Paul was brought before King Agrippa in the book of Acts and Paul testified before him. This man declared, Paul, almost you convinced me to become a Christian. But my brothers and my sisters and my friends, don't you know that to be almost convinced, almost persuaded, is to be altogether lost. We've never heard about Agrippa after that. He was almost persuaded, as you are, this morning. But he turned and he walked away. Jesus is saying, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I, Jesus, will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Eternal life is yours for the taking. Jesus is here. And he wants to give that to you. Do you want to take that this morning? Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you for your word this morning to all of our hearts. We thank you, Lord, that you are still in the saving business and that's the reason you came. You reminded us that the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. This morning, Lord, I bring to you those who are lost, are still lost and in their sin. They have heard your word. And Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that by your Holy Spirit, you will even now begin to speak to their hearts. And Lord, I pray that they will respond to the invitation to turn from their ways 
and to come and to follow you, to confess their sins, to receive you as their personal Lord and Savior. Father, I pray this morning that there will be rejoicing in the presence of the angel over one who will say yes to Jesus this morning. Lord, we ask that your spirit will even now just saturate this place. Just, just take over, Lord. Father, we pray that you will give grant the grace that is needed for those who are in the valley of decision at this pivotal moment. We pray, O oh God, that they will say yes and choose you whom to know is life forevermore. We give you thanks, we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray.